there is help available. And I think the key takeaway here is you are not alone. And I'm sure Kelly Truax has said that many, many times. Uh, she is the community outreach coordinator for the SAFE unit, and she joins us now to talk more about that. Kelly, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I guess that is the mantra, right? You're not alone. Exactly. Yes, you are not alone, and we are here to help. Except right now, we are, very many of us are alone. <laughs> well, that is true. Alone. It's such a strange time. <laughs> it is. It, it really is. But, um, you know, with community outreach, we're still trying to get the word out there that we are still available and we are actively participating in outreach. Okay, let's talk about um, what your position looked like pre-pandemic as far as community outreach. What kinds of things were you doing to reach people and to educate people? We were really busy. When I look at our calendar now, um, we are not canceling. We are rescheduling. Everyone is still interested in having us come out and present. So we're actively rescheduling, and we are trying to do as much as possible over Zoom. So uh, we actually just participated in a presentation uh, to a college in Chicago over Zoom on human trafficking, and it was extremely successful. Okay, so you've had to rethink kind of how you're reaching people. You've had to rethink how you're reaching people. Exactly. Now. Uh, Kelly, let me ask you, when you, when you reach out to the community, are, is your focus to educate or is your focus really to find a potential victim or someone who may be afraid to come forward and make sure they know that you're there for them? Or, or is it twofold? I think it's twofold. We, we are, our main um, goal is to educate. Uh, you know, we want to get the word out there. Education is key. Uh, and then, you know, we do provide advocates. So that has happened at several of our presentations where we are talking about sensitive subjects such as sexual assault or intimate partner violence. And afterwards, we have been approached by someone that wanted to make a disclosure. And we had provided advocacy services for them and connected them to resources so that they could get aftercare. I would imagine your job has gotten a little easier in the sense, I mean, over the course of years, in the sense that people understand sexual assault, they understand abuse uh, and domestic violence a lot better than they did even 20, 30 years ago. What is the thing that they don't get? Uh, I think one of the things that they don't get is that there are services out there to to assist them with with getting help. Uh, you know, a lot of times when we go into schools and even into uh, organizations with adults, they don't even know what safe is, what safe means, or that we were, you know, even available to them. So you have your job cut out for you then? Yes, uh, we, do, we do, but this year has been extremely su successful. We have provided education to, you know, so many organizations, schools, um, you know, EMTs, resource officers. So the word is out there now. Do you find it, uh, are you encouraged by the fact that people can talk about it now more freely? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it's very encouraging that we are seeing people reaching out to us, um, you know, calling, asking for help, asking if we can send them resources. We have other organizations that are asking if they, you know, if we can send them packets of our information so that they can provide it to the people that they serve. So it's great. Despite all the outreach, despite the education, uh, and maybe it's just a cycle that happens in families, I don't know, but it's still so prevalent, isn't it? it? It absolutely is. And I'm thankful that we have GBMC Safe here that we can provide these services to people that need them. What frustrates you the most? The fact that people won't reach out, the fact that um, it often will repeat. Um, what, what are some areas that you find particularly hard? What mountains are particularly hard to climb from your point of view? I think the thing that is most frustrating for me and that I had encountered personally during a presentation is that some people don't think that it's happening as often as it is, and some people don't think that it's happening as often as it is to certain vulnerable populations. I think that's what's most upsetting to me. And when you say certain vulnerable populations, do you mean children? Uh, in my, um, with me, it's individuals with disabilities. Can you touch on that some more? 
uh, individuals with disabilities are at a much uh, higher rate of being sexually assaulted than someone that does not have a disability. Uh, we have worked very hard this year to target um, organizations that provide services, day services, uh, to um, people with disabilities. Uh, it's been extremely successful, but we have hit some, some walls with uh, with some organizations that just didn't want to talk about it or, you know, didn't think that it was happening. And it is. And I would, ima I would imagine that there are some uh, victims with uh, disabilities who can't even communicate what's happened. Is that right? Absolutely. And that is one of the barriers. And that is why it's so important to educate people that support those individuals and let them know that this does happen in the community and we are here to help. That is good to know. And I would think you would have to work very closely with law enforcement, too, because they often they're kind of learning too how to help people with disabilities. They often misinterpret what's happening. Absolutely. And our law enforcement partners have been extremely supportive with this initiative that we have taken. And they they support us 100 percent with this. Can you talk about what you think um, COVID-19 and our situation here will mean for um, you, all the members of the populations you're talking about and for your uh, outreach efforts? Um, you know, I think, you know, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You know, doing a one-on-one -on -one presentation, you always, it's a little more personal, uh, you know, and, but we're doing everything that we can, um, working with our media to make sure that we're still able to provide presentations, that we're putting out information, that we're still able to send out our brochures, and that the word is getting out there, and that if, you know, if we're needed, we are going to be there. Well, Kelly Truax, thank you so much for thank you. Um, spreading the word about SAFE and um, I think it's interesting. I've heard, heard of SAFE. I've done stories about it. But when you say that there's still a lot of people who don't know what it is and what it does and who maybe not even realize there's a huge problem, um, I think that your job will never be done. <laughs> well, thank you. So I, I commend you and I thank you so much for opening up the lines of communication and, and getting the word out. Is there anything you'd like to tell people as far as, um, and we've heard from Ashley and from Laura as well, but for people who, because you're out in the community all the time, right. people who might because of what you said, think, huh, I wonder if that's happening there, or I wonder if that person's a victim. I think the important thing to know is that um, you can, anyone, we don't turn anyone away. If it's three people that want a presentation or if it's 300, and we have done uh, audiences as large as 300, um, they can go to our website. There's an information and education tab. They can go to, uh, they can click on that. They can access all of the information on our presentations. They can fill out a form stack request and I can get in touch with them and talk more about the resources that are available in presentations and get something set up. So even from, I mean, I'm sure there's frustrating situations where if the victim doesn't want help, it's very hard for people to help them, right? They have to kind of be willing. Exactly. But at least from your perspective, if you educate the community, all the better. Yep, education is key. I agree, education and awareness. Kelly Truex, thank you so much for joining us on Greater Living today. I hope that there's somebody watching live or will watch uh, on YouTube uh, who can be helped if one person, one person picks up the phone and calls safe. And we're going to put the number up there one more time. Uh, calls safe anytime, 24 7, and gets help. Then everything we've talked about in the last 40 minutes or so has been well worth it. And uh, it's all part of um, a big part of also staying safe uh, every day, but also particularly during uh, this pandemic. So um, thank you for being there. Thanks to everyone involved in SAFE. And uh, thank you for joining us on GBMC's Greater Living Today. And you stay safe.